Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Cody Holyoke. The pressure continues to grow for former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens to drop out of the race for U.S. Senate. Members of his own party are pressuring him to ditch his Senate run after his ex-wife revealed new allegations of abuse. In an affidavit revealed as part of a custody hearing last week, Sheena Greitens accuses Eric of physically and emotionally abusing her and their two sons. Sheena claims that in the summer of 2018, Eric threatened to kill himself unless she publicly supported him. This was during the scandal that led to his resignation. She also claims Eric knocked her down, took her phone, wallet and keys so she wouldn't be able to leave with the kids or call for help. And in early 2020, she claims when she was offered a tenured position at the University of Texas, Eric threatened to use his political influence to get the offer revoked. Now, Eric Reitens flat out denies the allegations, even called his ex-wife deranged in a statement. His attorney also wants this affidavit sealed, saying unproven charges could irreparably harm Greitens' candidacy. Politicians, especially his opponents, want him to drop out of the race. It's just horrific, and that's why I don't believe he deserves to represent our state, and that's why I called for him to step down from the Senate race. Here to discuss the fallout and what comes next are KNBC 9 political reporter Michael Mahoney and Brian Ellison, host contributor with KCUR. Uh, thank you both for being here. Uh, Brian Greitens has led the polls for a while, so fellow Republicans want him out regardless. Of right course now. they do. But of course, what they may not be remembering is that this is exactly what works for former Governor Eric Greitens. He has always played into a narrative of uh, everyone's out to get me. I am the anti-establishment candidate, and this is just another example, as he has framed the allegations against him, of the uh, the institution, the political establishment, trying to attack him. He's dismissed the, the allegations as politically motivated, um, and and we'll see if that sticks. It certainly has worked in the past to energize his base of support. Although we should remember that he he did end up resigning as governor the last time this happened. Yeah. yeah the, the the other thing on this is. Uh, this was clearly the worst day of the Greitens campaign in this Senate race uh, last uh, Monday when, when, when this happened. He is very, very, very unlikely to resign. And it also brings back the whole thing that you just brought up, Brian, there, that the reasons why he resigned from the governor's office back in 2018, it was this affair he had with a hairdresser while he was married. There was also a charge that he stole money from uh, his, uh, his, his charity. And there is going to be a uh, severe counterattack by the Greitens campaign that's probably underway right now. Um, this, is, uh, this is a major development, means that uh, Eric Greitens' personal character is going to be a dominant issue in this primary campaign in Missouri. Which is absolutely what the Democrats in Missouri want. They're, right. And they're a lot of the Republicans that are uh, again, running against him. For too. sure, and leading up to the primary. The only chance that Democrats believe they have, frankly, if, uh, if, of reclaiming this Senate seat is to have Greitens as the Republican nominee. And so and, there's a lot of mixed feelings happening behind and, the And the other thing I, I want to quickly bring up is there had been talk in the uh, Republican Senate primary for months that perhaps his ex-wife, Sheena Greitens, who is now a poli-sci professor down at the University of Texas, was going to comment in some fashion about um, uh, the end of their marriage and Greitens' conduct. Um, a lot of people thought it was going to be a national news interview. Very few thought it was going to be a court-sworn affidavit. All right, and we know the Republican Party is looking at this very closely. By many accounts, still the party of Trump, right? And while yet not yet offering an endorsement, uh, there's been some movement on that uh, regard, especially with Billy Long. Yeah, week. Uh, um, late uh, in the in the week, Donald Trump. Uh, issued a statement that saying that Missouri uh, voters ought to consider looking at Billy Long as, as their nominee on this because he's a hard worker, he was an early supporter of Trump, and, they, and he also said this is not an endorsement, but uh, Missourians should consider it, and he ended, a, he ended his statement by saying, just asking. Now, Long says that he talked he had a cold call from Trump on last Monday night when he was in Springfield and said that Trump inquired to him about the allegations against Greitens, what the fallout was. And uh, then there was another call on Tuesday, according to Long, from Trump saying, hey, I just want you to know uh, that uh, I'm issuing a statement uh, pretty soon that uh, I think you'll, you'll really like. And his campaign says right now, Long's campaign says, any of the candidates in this in this Republican primary would have liked to have had what Trump said about Billy Long. It's very interesting. And this week we also saw another story related to former Governor Greitens, a private investigator tasked with uh, looking into allegations that Greitens blackmailed a woman, uh, pleaded guilty to tampering with evidence. In fact, former governor actually took a victory lap on Twitter. Let's listen in. You can see they run the same playbook again and again and again. False accusations to attack 
patriots. But at the end of the day, the truth prevails. Okay, so what's happening in that case? From his standpoint, does this sort of balance out the news week on the Greitens camp? Well, that's certainly how he's going to portray it. Right. William Tisby, the ex-FBI agent who uh, accepted uh, guilt in one misdemeanor charge, he's being sentenced to a year of probation. Uh, that plays in again to that narrative that uh, that that everyone's out to get Eric Greitens. But the fact is, this isn't really an exoneration of him. This is about uh, an old case sort of being finalized and dealt with. Uh, in, in reality, Eric Greitens uh, still is going to have to deal with those questions of character that keep coming up again and again. I think this is a this is a short-term story. I think the allegations of abuse are a long-term story. I don't think uh, any Missouri voter would wa would recognize William Tisby if he walked into their room exactly. right now. It's a, it's very inside baseball. He did get probation, but he did plead guilty. All right, Michael Mahoney, Brian Ellison, we'll leave it there. A lot to talk about uh, as the campaign goes on. Thank you very much.